Hey GarageBand fans, it's Dr. Watson here with another GarageBand tutorial. This one on one of the most overlooked but extremely useful areas of the program, and that is the GarageBand preferences. Um, there's so many things that um, can help a, a producer when you're using GarageBand that are in that preferences, but the one thing that I have found um, um, I'm most addressing with students that I teach is when they don't hear sound coming out of the program and they wonder where the sound went, it turns out that the GarageBand preferences has routed the sound to some other sound source than the computer they're using. And I'll show you what that is right away uh, since that might be um, the problem you're encountering. So for instance, in the tabs along the top, there's a general tab, an audio MIDI tab, a loops tab, my info and advanced. So this audio MIDI tab has uh, two drop-down windows, one for um, how is sound coming into GarageBand and how is sound leaving GarageBand. Well, a lot of times when you plug an audio interface or a keyboard that has an audio interface on board, or even a microphone that has an audio interface on board, like the um, Blue uh, Yeti, um, where the sound could actually be coming out of the interface itself or the microphone itself, um, you if you have the output set to that interface, like my Pro Keys, um, uh, MIDI keyboard has an interface on board. I could plug an XLR microphone into it. And so if I have my output device set as that interface, then I need to have my headphones or my monitor speakers or whatever plugged into that interface. But if I want to keep using the sound coming from my computer, you should leave it at built in. And that way, um, the sound coming out of GarageBand will be routed from the computer to whatever sound system or headphones um, that you normally have set up. So frequently in the lab where I teach, students are using an interface. They plug the interface in. GarageBand gives them a, a message, hey, do you want to use this interface? And you say yes. And then it turns both of these to the interface for input and output. When in, in, in my lab, at least, we only want to use the input device as the interface to, to take the input of an XLR microphone the signal coming from that microphone into GarageBand, but then we want the output to be built in uh, because we monitor our sound through headphones that are uh, plugged into the computers themselves. So I just wanted to do that one right off the top because that's the most frequent error that uh, would take you into this preferences. Um, but let me show you um, by tab some of the things you might in be interested in. So this first tab is called Software Instrument Recordings. Well, it's the general tab, but the, the topic is Software Instrument Recordings. And there's a thing called Cycle On and Cycle Off. This is the Cycle Region um, button, and it when you press it, it looks like two uh, yellow arrows. When you press it, you'll get a region up here in the, the timeline, and you can change the, the length of that region. And what, it, what you're saying is, how long do I want to record um, in what's called the Cycle Region mode? And what that allows you to do is things like overdubbing and replace recording and even takes recording where you do multiple takes of a solo, say for instance. So with cycle region on, how do you want the software recordings to act? And with cycle region off, how do you want the, uh, the um, software instrument recordings to act. Let's do cycle re region off first because that's the normal mode. Usually you don't see that yellow thing. Usually you don't hit that button except for by accident. And so right now I'm going to say with cycle region off, let's merge my recordings. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, record button. I'm going to play along to a drum loop I have here. And I'm going to just play a uh, an electric piano uh, sound. So here we go. Uh, Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so I've recorded that. Now, because I said merge down here, right, because I'm going to bring this up here, because my cycle region off um, says merge the recordings, I'll be able to go back and record right on top of that um, in what, what in the uh, world of music production is called overdub recording. You don't replace or eliminate what's already there, you just add to it. So let's try that. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I should have both of those uh, parts in the same track now. Right, okay. Now, the other way, let me just get rid of that and try it with um, replace as my choice for cycle off. Now I'm going to record that first part. Two, three, four, one. Okay, and then if I go back and record again, 
it'll replace it. Two, three, four. <laughs> And you'll see now I only have the second recording. My timing is bad, but <laughs> anyway, so it replaced it. So usually what I do is I'll leave cycle off, I'll leave it to merge so I can do some overdub recording. Cycle on that left to merge would do exactly the same thing. So if I had um, that um, for eight measures now, let me make it four so it's it's not going to take us so long. But if I, for four measures I have this cycle region set, when I play the first time and then play the second time, I will get two tracks that are overdubbed and it'll work exactly like what you just saw with the cycle region offset to merge. But the one thing that I want to show you that's different is with cycle on create takes, you can give yourself multiple takes to choose from. And then after you're done, after you do like say three different takes, you can go back and preview what those takes um, sound like and decide which one you want to keep. I'll show you what that, how that works. So one, two, three, four. So this is my little backbeat keyboard part. Okay, now I've just done one recording. Watch what happens, I'll go back and do it a second time, but because I had create takes, it'll actually give me a second recording that's stored in that same track, but separately. Watch this. Two, three, four. All right, so because I had create takes, what I now have, if you look up here, is there is a drop down menu at the top left of the region that shows me a here's take one and then here is take two and let's do a take three just to show you how that you can just keep doing this as much as you want two three four So I could compare all those, and here's take three, right? Take two, take one. You can delete um, whichever take you don't like. You could, um, you know, keep the one you keep that one and delete all the other ones if you want to. Um, but you're you're able to do multiple takes. That's great for a soloist, for instance, a guitar soloist or a saxophone soloist that maybe just does the same twelve measures three or four times and then goes back and sees what they like. For that matter, you can even divide if you wanted to put a split um, in the track and say you liked. Um, let me select this, I'm sorry. Say you liked um, the first part of take one, but you liked the last part of take three. Now I've got that. Okay, so anyway, that's kind of cool thing that's in, um, in general preferences. And then bottom of the uh, preferences uh, general tab is just about reset warnings. When you uh, plug something in and it gives you a little message, you can say don't show this message again. If you want to reset that to the factory, you know, out of the box settings in a sense, you can do that. All right, we've already talked about um, input and output for the general, um, for the audio MIDI tab and how important that is. This next area here that says effects for audio units, uh, you definitely want to have that checked. That means if you have any other audio units plugins installed on your computer for other programs, they'll show up within GarageBand. And um, so an example of that would be, say I went into um, the smart controls and then the inspector down here, and there's a little plugin area and one of the blank slots, I could now ask it to show me any audio unit plugins. And all these plugins are available because of another program. Um, it's actually Logic that I have installed on this computer. But so those plugins are available because I've asked them to be available. And if you had some other plugins from other programs, independent third party ones or whatever, um, you could ask them to show too. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, let me close this. The other thing on this preferences, um, uh, audio MIDI tab is it says reset MIDI driver. So say for instance your keyboard somehow becomes unresponsive. If you click that it'll find the keyboard again uh, or any other MIDI device. Okay under loops there's not too much in loops my info in advance. I just want to give you a quick tour um, that uh, some things that you might want for instance where it says keyword browsing uh, filter for more relevant results. Well you may want to do that. Um, it, loops do get changed a little bit 
when you speed up the tempo or change the key drastically from their original key. So if you click this, it'll only show you loops that are close to the key that you're in. Here I'm in C major, so it'll only show me loops that are within you know, two half steps of C major, like D major going up or B flat major going down. Um, you can ask, let me open up the loop browser over here. You can actually ask for GarageBand to show you over on the uh, right side here if you click loop browser display original tempo and key you can actually ask it to show you that if you're interested in that I normally don't have those checked but they're there over in my info that's how when you save a GarageBand document or export it this shows you um, the information you know maybe when you put it into iTunes it'll have this album name and, and so forth so you know I have it set to my name but you could change that the artist formerly known as Scott Watson or something um, advanced I doubt you want 24-bit. Um, GarageBand exports normally, I think, 16-bit, which is the kind of Red Book CD uh, description of um, uh, stereo files. But um, if you want 24-bit, you can say it. Uh, maybe there's somebody who requires that. I would leave this auto normalized checked so that it um, uh, kind of equalizes the sound and makes the um, the softs and the louds. Um, it's it, it normalizing is a great feature uh, for when you're exporting a project, and it. Um, will increase the loudness so that it matches um, other areas that are um, you won't have like as big a change between soft and loud um, and that's good um, and then movie thumbnail resolution I usually leave it at low so the program works faster if you want to see a little bit more high quality of a resolution you would check high anyway those are the um, GarageBand preferences uh, features that uh, you'd want the big two I'd say would be knowing about this cycle on and off you know for the the cycle region that yellow bar and then making sure that you have output set to what you want most people choose built-in output so that they hear the sound coming out of their computer some people do like to plug a headphones into their audio interface and do it that way but those things are really important to know about um, good luck with GarageBand